Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. If there is one individual I would have really wished to be on the ballot, then that person is none other than Mike Mbuvi Sonko. Mike Sonko's entry into the Mombasa gubernatorial race was going to make the contest very interesting. And if he were going to be on the race and end up winning, <laughs> again, Mike Sonko would have made history in this country. But Mike Sonko committed one big political mistake, which I'm sure is going to, re to, to regret his entire life. Fighting the deep state and the system. Mike Sonko, as the Jubilee gubernatorial candidate in 2017, should have noted that President Ru Kenyatta and the deep state were keen on Nairobi. And that's why they gave him Polycap Igade as his running mate. The truth of the matter is that there was no way Mike Sonko was going to allow Polycap Igade to run Nairobi while he's playing politics. That was not going to happen. But Mike Sonko ought to have figured out how to appease both the deep state and his own political interest. The IBC tribunal <laughs> threw out Mike Sonko's petition. And if you ask me, I tend to think that Mike Sonko will not be on the ballot. It's actually over for him. So in this video, I want us to look at the options for Mike Sonko. Because that ruling would mean several things. The first thing it's going to mean is that Mike Sonko cannot run for any political office in this country. If Sonko decides to go for the Senate, he cannot. If he decides to go for MP, Sonko cannot. If Mike Sonko decides to go for MCA, he cannot. So basically, his political career has come to an abrupt end. And I'm very sad about that because Mike Sonko is one of the few leaders you can call hustlers. People whose rise can actually be attributed to their efforts. That ruling again is also being monitored very closely by those who are impeached, someone like, uh, like uh, the, 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 the UDA candidate for, senatorial candidate for Kiambu, who was also locked out. It was also being monitored, monitored very keenly by someone like, like uh, Babayao, Ferdinand Waititu. Because if Sonko was going to be cleared to run, then it means someone like Waititu can actually run again in future. So the, 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 the ruling was being monitored very closely. And the other thing which is also important is that Kenyans are now monitoring or will be monitoring the impeachment proceedings at the Senate. I don't think there's a governor who will accept to be impeached easily because impeachment would mean the end of a political career. And again, the question is, the senators, can they be used to end political careers? Like, I'm just giving an example. Reno Ding is going to contest for the presidency. Root is going to contest for the presidency. Then after that, you're going to have another election in 2027. So if a governor is going to rise very strongly to be a potential presidential candidate, is there a chance that a president can actually engineer his impeachment so that he's locked out of a future presidential race? So the Senate, in, the, in my view, is going to play a key role in determining or in shaping the presidential contest in this country in future. And importantly, is Kalonzo Musyoka. Kalonzo Musyoka is in, in... And lastly, is Kalonzo Musyoka. He's also being monitored. Was Mombasa part of his negotiations within Azimio? So Kenyans will be able to get answers to that very soon. Remember, Mike Sonko has been denied 
the right to contest based on two main issues. Number one is the degree. Remember, Mike Songo contested in 2017. He was cleared with the same degree. This time around, they are saying he never submitted certified copy of the original. I mean, certified copy of his degree certificate that he submitted it on 7th, which was late. So they were questioning why he delayed submitting it while he ought to have submitted it much earlier. They're also talking of this impeachment. You know, once you are impeached, then you cannot contest. This is one of the rulings which Songo has been trying to pursue. And he went up to the Supreme Court. <laughs> so it's very interesting. So I wanted to listen to Mike Songo very, very briefly. Then Mike Songo and his lawyers very, very briefly before we go to what next for Mike Songo. We put before the committee a very good case. And uh, the ruling is highly objectionable. We intend to go to the High Court and challenge it. And we are hoping that the High Court will hand down a good ruling so that the Governor Sonko can continue to play a leading role in the politics of this country, and particularly in Mombasa. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Amushima, would you like to say something? Yes, I want to say on behalf of uh, Waipa Party, we have supported uh, Governor Songo all through. Our expectation is that uh, when we go to the High Court tomorrow, we will stay uh, all the orders given by the committee today. And the time will stop running till the High Court makes a determination as to whether the people of this country will decide. The sovereign power is with the people of Mombasa. Yes. And they must be given an opportunity to decide who their leader is. Uh, thank you very much. First and foremost, I wish to tell our supporters, I know they're disappointed with the ruling that has been made this evening, but we want to tell them to be patient because our lawyers are working around the clock and we're taking this matter of the High Court tomorrow. And we are very hopeful that we'll get the stay orders for the rulings that have been done this evening. But what is really appalling us is the decision and the ruling that was made by the chair and the two commissioners who are heading the bench. Uh, if we remember, and uh, I'm so happy that we've requested for the raw data, the raw audio, whereby the IBC lawyer was asked by the commissioners whether the issue of the degree and the timelines was an issue. And he confirmed that the degree and the timelines was not an issue. We know money must have been exchanged hands. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I want to conquer with the sentiments of Madam Lumala, the lawyer. Mm. Our case was supposed to be ruled yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Friday, uh, Saturday, 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 Sunday. Sunday, Sunday mm -hmm. Monday. Uh, Monday, 11, Yakuja 2, Yakuja 4, Yakuja 5.30, Yakuja 8. So it's some minutes past 10. But PSC is not intelligence. Mm. We to handle mambo mingi pia ofisadi. Tunalewa vile kunaenda. Na tunajua paka maproxies wala wametumika. Magunia pesa wala ya mebebwa. We understand who is there na likuwa nafanya kazi wapi. Deputy ya nani. We understand all these cases. So, tusilagesha inchi nyuma. Tupeleke inchi mbele. But ya mambo ya mafanyika, tunalagesha inchi nyuma. I'm not above the law, but we want justice. Today, but the biggest question is, what next for Mike Bovi Songo? Because Songo is one individual you cannot just ignore. I know President Ruka Yata cannot ignore Songo. Ryan Odinga cannot ignore Songo. William Ruto cannot ignore Songo. Songo is the only politician in this country who has his own support base away from these other politicians. And the support base is actually across. There are people in UDA who would easily vote for Songo, even if he were to run in Azimia. And that in Azimio, there are also people who will easily vote for Mike Sonko, even if he were to run under Oda. So the truth of the matter is that Sonko is a key political player in this country. And that's why Stephen Kanozo Musioka is trying so hard to cling to him. But what next for Mike Sonko? Before we get, we get into all those, in case you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now, let us get back to the main issue. What next for Sonko? Several questions. Number one, is he going to throw his weight behind 
Abdul Somad Nasir, the ODM candidate for Mombasa, or is it going to throw his weight behind Hassan Omar? The truth of the matter is that if he were to, to throw his weight behind Hassan Omar, it's going to complicate the equation for Nasir. If he were to, to throw his weight behind Nasir, it will be over, game over for Nasir, and Nasir is going to be the next governor for Mombasa. So Kenyans will be monitoring very closely his next move, especially in Mombasa. Sonko, within a very short time, had actually created a cat-like following in Mombasa. The only person who can help Kenyans ni Sonko ni ako na rua kutoa anasaidia si wajane si umasikini. Tunakusi President Mwikai Kenyatta, Baba the Fifth, Raila Odinga, Kalozo Musioka, kila tu mwenye musika kwa hapa. Tunawaomba, musikia hakia tu sisi ya wanyonge. That's number one. Number two, is he going to stand by Kalonzo? The truth of the matter is that Mike Sonko is a wise man, for those who understand what wise men are. And he wanted his name to be cleared. And he believed that the only way his name he could be cleared was through the deep state. The deep state were keen on having Kalonzo Musyoka on their side. So Mike Sonko went and patched himself on the court of Kalonzo Musyoka in the hope that he will, become, he will be part and parcel of Kalonzo Musyoka's negotiations within Azimio. The truth is, Sonko would want his name to be cleared even if not for the purposes of this election even for the future. Because I believe Sonko is someone who can cause political disruption, just like Wajakoya V. I saw Wajakoya V alikwana ni Maliza jana. I don't know why. <laughs> Wajakoya, mimi sina shida na wewe. You are, you are the fifth. We support you. <laughs> so the truth of the matter is that if Sonko were to go for the presidency, he would cause the kind of disruption we are witnessing Wajakoya is causing. Those are the truth. So in future, Sonko would want to even become the governor. Because if you look at Sonko's politics, he was elected a member of parliament, senator, governor. With all these clearance issues, he was going to be re-elected. Either in Nairobi, I'm sure he would not have moved to Mombasa. Then, again, after, after being serving two governor, term as a governor, what next for, for Sonko? The presidency. So he has that potential. So I'm sure Sonko would want a situation where all these things are cleared so that he can run in the future. And so the question is, will he stand with Kalonzo? Because that's the, the path he had actually started following to achieve that objective. The other question is, is he going to support Raila Odinga's bid? Let's say he will throw in the towel and say, okay, I'm out of this race and uh, I want to stand here today to announce that I'm going to support Raila Mulodinga. Is he going to support Raila Mulodinga? And if he's going to support Raila Mulodinga, what's in for him? Because politics is about interest. Those are the questions. And what role will he be playing in Raila Mulodinga's campaign? Because Songo is someone you can't, can't join your team and you push him back. You'll tell him, okay, wewe utakuwa flower girl there. Sonko will have to take a role. 
what I mean, what's in for him in Azimio? Those are the questions. And lastly, is he going to support Ruto? And why would he support Ruto? To punish the system. So the question most Kenyans are asking and are monitoring very closely is his next move. Because yesterday, Sonko announced very clearly that for him, it's not over. But he's going to issue directive to his supporters. Which directive is he going to join Ruto? And if he were to join Ruto, what role will he be playing in that team? And what's, he, what's in for him? I know on Ruto's side, if Ruto becomes the president and Songo supports him, Songo is going to be appointed a cabinet minister. For El Udinga, I'm not sure. So let us wait and see how all these events are going to unfold right before our eyes in this country. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye-bye.